Hello out there in the gaming world. Welcome to another edition of East Meets West Gaming. I am Commander Cornelia, your host, and today we'll be playing Star Trek Online, specifically talking about the Pathfinder Long Range uh, Tier 6 Science Vessel. It's the most recent addition to the C Store or Zen Store uh, in the game of Star Trek Online. And uh, today, just going to be talking pretty much the main reason everyone's going to be purchasing it. The Voyager interiors, and then talking a little bit about the exterior uh, aesthetics. Uh, not going to get too much detailed into the um, specs and capabilities of the ship. It's not bad, but there are better science ships out there, in my opinion. Uh, I think the Vesta still remains the, the best, uh, one of the best, pretty much, science vessels out there. And the Pathfinder, while not a bad ship in any capacity, is still a pretty good support vessel uh, for a decent science captain, uh, shouldn't be considered your, your primary vessel of choice, uh, in my opinion. That said, most people who are going to be picking this up will be doing so for the Voyager interiors. Um, I know that's why I did it. Uh, I wasn't really looking for another Intrepid because I already had the Bellerophon from way back in the old Z stores, uh, C store days. I did not see much of a need to upgrade to a T6 long range science vessel. But that said, it's not a bad ship. It's a decent ship and it's fun to fly. And I've seen some pretty decent builds with it. Uh, science captains, of course, naturally will get the most out of it. Um, and I've seen some very solid science builds, but I'm a tactical captain. So I'm not able to take much advantage of that, um, but it's still a fun ship to fly. You know, I like the Voyager series. I like the Intrepid class as a whole, and I think it's a pretty good ship. So, uh, apologies first, actually, uh, for the long delays since I've actually posted any recordings. I have uh, been in the middle of a move. I used to live uh, down here in Yokosuka, Japan. That's where I was stationed uh, on board USS George Washington. I have now transferred to Seoul to the Korean Peninsula, so now I'm living in Seoul. And it's interesting to note that even apparently in the 25th century, North Korea has still not joined the rest of the world. What a shame. So anyways, uh, first we'll talk about the ship's exterior before we uh, go walking around in the interior. So first off, uh, at first glance, and I've already done a bit of a modification, mind you, I've changed the pylons here so that they're, they're, they're more in line with the traditional Voyager, you know, directly uh, flat rather than angled. Uh, but you will notice that it does, uh, it's very heavily inspired uh, by the Intrepid class, the core Intrepid design, um, very much like the Bellerophon. Um, unlike, say, some of the other uh, skin options, uh, this one very much retains a lot of the feel of the original Intrepid. Um, it's secondary deflector in comparison to all of them. is bloody massive, as you can see. And actually is kind of cool looking. Um, I'm not going to lie. That is got a lot. It's, it's kind of neat how the way they've done that. Um, the new, the primary deflector array is uh, different. It's got a, uh, this now this little notched area in front of it, um, which is also pretty cool. Uh, overall, I would say the design is much, it, it feels fatter. It feels bulkier. Um, when I don't think it's actually that much. I think it's only a, a deck or two uh, thicker, if you will. Um, in terms of height, from you know stem to to the folks, I guess the top of the vessel, but uh, it doesn't feel all chunky. But it does when you look at it from a kind of a side angle. It does does look a little fatter. Um, shuttle bay, of course, in the aft portion, uh, same where as the Voyager. But it kind of looks more like the old school, uh, like you'd found in the original uh, like Constitution, you know, the original Enterprise, uh, the Excelsiors, things of that nature. Um, they've retained the two aft-mounted, or aft-firing, uh, torpedo launchers, as you saw on the uh, original Intrepid. Um, one thing that's, and you can see them, these are supposed to be, I guess, the forward, fo fo yeah, forward-facing, excuse me, uh, photon launchers, and then, uh, the phaser strips. Now, unlike some of the other ships that I've seen, uh, the, the overall actual texturing and skin is really, really good. Um... They've done a lot of little detailing in terms of like little paint marks and things of that nature, particularly around like the phaser strips and the escape pods and things of that nature. It, I, uh, it seems just to me that a lot more thought went into the skin, uh, the overall just texturing over it. So uh, good on them for that. I think it looks uh, pretty darn good. Um, I'm using the Romulan set, so that's why this, everything has this green tint right now. Um, if I go in and disable visuals, you'll get a... Where is it? It should be the shield one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there, without the, the tinting, you see the core. This is this is the baseline uh, texturing that exists. 
Um, do kind of like the... Well, actually, I'll take that back. The more I've messed with it... Originally, I took a liking to the way they had kind of recessed the name, play, uh, the ship's vessel registry right here. Um, but now I kind of don't like it as much as, I, as, say, the old Intrepid, where it was nicely emblazoned. You could very much see what it was. Here, it's barely... You can barely see it. U.S. is Kyoto. Very hard to kind of make out. But then again, not everyone's focusing on your name. Uh, so I kind of question that design choice after the fact, but... You know, where else were you going to put it with the secondary deflector recessed as it is and the whole forward hull area notched right forward of the bridge. So, not too bad. Uh, so, yeah, uh, overall, pretty decent looking ship. Um, it's not bad. There are definitely uglier ships in the game. <laughs> uh, very much the Chimera. And uh, if you're really looking for kind of a new aesthetic choice for your ships and you've got Zen laying around, it's not a terrible choice. So let me uh, flip back on my uh, Romulan colors because I kind of like the added color. And we will go inside. So let's uh, go visit the Starship Bridge. Now, this is the reason everyone purchased this set in the first place. Uh, the Voyager interiors. Now, I am running the actual, the, the Voyager interiors. I am not running um, the, uh, you know, fresh out of the box Intrepid class interior. Uh, I ran around that one for a little while. It's not too much different, but there's there's a lot of things missing, and it seems just it, I don't know. It's it feels stock, and mm, just personal preference. I like the, the there seems to be more life, you know. It, it just seems more lived in with the uh, the actual Voyager. Like people actually are on board. This is not some fresh commissioned vessel. Um, so first we start off here on the bridge, and as you can see, it's pretty much spot on, a hundred percent for the Voyager Bridge. Um, you know, they've got this awesome, just like they did in the show, of course, uh, master display panel right here at the L-Cars, this cross-section of the ship. Uh, I know that you can actually get this off, uh, I think, the Cryptic website for as a wallpaper, and it is, uh, it's pretty slick. It's pretty cool seeing the, the interior of the ship lay out like that. I really wish they did more of that with the other bridges, uh, particularly the the... Uh, the galaxy bridges. I've, I've never felt they've had a true galaxy bridge, and I really wish they'd, they'd, they'd bring one up. But as you can see, um, overall, it's pretty much 100% replica. Uh, perfect. you got the, the two captain's chairs, rather the captain and the first officer. Uh, the tactical station, as was manned by originally uh, Tuvok, so here we have a tactical uh, command or a tactical guy manning it. Uh, Instant Kim's station, the science station, being manned by a science person. Now that's where it gets kind of weird, you know. Yes, he was a tactical officer, so he wore gold. So now we've got a red shirt standing over there, and Kim also wore gold, <laughs> and I've got a blue shirt standing there. So, but a hey, minor quibbles, no big deal. Um, of course, Khan, you've got that sitting right up front, right where Tom Paris used to do, you know, flips and stuff. <laughs> and uh, so overall, pretty good layout. Now uh, it is a bit larger um, in some respects, uh, and just like there's been some height issues here. So it's a little bit taller, um, but it's barely noticeable. And you can understand why, because if they did 100% to the scale, your camera would be bumping into the bulkheads you know, every five seconds, and you wouldn't really be able to look around. It'd be kind of difficult to maneuver. So, all in all, pretty darn uh, pretty darn cool. One uh, item I found, and granted, this may have changed because I haven't been playing in a long time, but you go to Starship Selection, all your ships are available. Um, which is pretty slick. Now, please correct me in the comments below if that has since changed, if they're now allowing uh, everybody. But originally, as I understood it, with the exception of my Tufli, my Tufli freighter, whenever I went up to go switch ships, I was only given uh, the small craft options, my shuttles. But the opportunity to actually flip to a new vessel within the game, that's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. Granted, I mean, you can also change vessels out in sector space, but still cool. So over here, we have the conference room. And we can finally actually get to see what's around this corner. A door! There's a door around the corner. Well, now we all know. I was wondering about that the entire Voyager season. I was like, what's around that corner? I wonder. People just walk around that corner and make random statements. You know, that tends to make everyone who's sitting at the desk, or excuse me, at the, uh, the table, shut up. Uh, it's bigger. It's a lot bigger. It is kind of weird. Um, and you get these, it, it, it's actually kind of a throw-off on the bridge, where the bridge felt kind of just right. This space does feel a little bit 
almost too big. You know, you kind of got these cathedral-sized windows. Uh, but one thing that is cool is that every uh, every essentially every window on the ship that you look at, every portal you look out, you actually see the the hull of the ship, which is, to my recollection, a first. I can't recall any other ship uh, interior where you are able to walk right up and see the actual outer hull of the vessel. Um, and of course, true to the Voyager interior, this is definitely what you could see from from the conference room. So I think that's pretty cool. Looking out, and there's the hull of your ship. You'll see the, the two escape pods right here recessed into the hull. Um, so that's the conference room. We'll cross the bridge over to the ready room. Okay, so captain's ready room, spot on. Uh, even though it is a little feels a little bit big, uh, still perfect. Uh, this is supposed to be Tuvox uh, ready room. You can see with the IDIC. Uh, symbol over here, uh, the Cotiscot. Uh, for some random reason, there is a Cardassian pad just sitting over here. Now, it's actually raised a question to me, and I'm going to have to go ahead and check the old Voyager shows. I know Janeway actually fought in the Cardassian War, not not the Dominion War, but the original Cardassian border skirmish, um, and I'm kind of wondering, did she actually have a Cardassian pad as like a, a memento from that conflict? Um, so I'm going to have to go back and check this. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Um, I don't know how many scenes actually point the camera in that direction, but if there are, we'll keep an eye out for that, because it does seem kind of random that there's a Cardassian pad just kind of sitting here. Uh, of course, Cotiscott, you know. It'd be kind of cool if you could actually play with the Cotiscott game. I, I mean, I have no idea what the rules are, but it'd be pretty cool to try it. Uh, of course, naturally over here, you've got the you know, library files, account bank, and your duty officers, uh, as is the norm for pretty much every other ready room. Uh, so pretty good. But uh, for in comparison to all the ready rooms, this is actually a really nice ready room. I mean, you got this little raised area, this little lounge thing going on. I mean, it's just, this is a nice ready room. Um, you know, God, Picard got the short end of the stick when they gave him his ready room. It was like half the size of this thing. You know, Cisco only had his office. So, all right. Uh, so that's the the bridge. We'll go down to deck two and see the mess hall. Mess hall. Okay. So here's my first complaint. I'm gonna try to say this only once, but you'll probably hear me gripe about it f further down the road in this video. My God, look at all these people. I mean, just look at all of them. And you get out to a main corridor, like this one, and granted, they're actually, this is actually the fewest I've ever seen, but eventually this thing will just start packing full of people. I'll have a solid stream of people walking to and from. And I know the con the complement of, of an Intrepid class vessel is not that much. Um, and the fact that all these people just have this time to wander around the P-Ways, I mean, no, no, you don't have this. What are you, what are all you people doing? You know, don't you have duties to get to? All right, so over here is the transporter room. Transporter room, 100%, pretty cool looking. Gotta look around the corner here. A little transporter control, transporter pad, which uh, you've seen them using now uh, at the new. Uh, well, it's no longer really new, but uh, Earth Space Dock, you know, using this style for the uh, the transporter pads, which is pretty cool. I always kind of like the Voyager transporter room. It looked pretty pretty slick. So now we'll go around the corner here and go into the mess hall. Now, I gotta admit, I really liked the feel of the mess hall, uh, particularly with uh, the Neelix additions, if you will. Um, it could have easily have just turned into this random space where people ate um, and just you know had dialogue, but it kind of came it became a character in its own right um, after Neelix you know implemented his changes to the mess hall, you know adding the countertop, his little burners and stuff. And uh, on that topic, you know f a lot of people for some reason really don't like Neelix. I I actually had no problem with the guy. I I liked him. Um, yeah, he was a bit over the top. You know, Ethan Phillips kind of played the role to the hilt, but I think he did a great job. I mean, and come on, people, well, he's not Jar Jar Binks. We, he's not that bad. You know, we can't we can't make the comparisons there. Um, so I was actually pretty happy to see him in Delta Rising. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe more of the Voyager cast, like Tom Paris, maybe uh, make a return. That would have been kind of cool. Um, Chicote, you know, but. You know, I'll settle for, for the cast. Which was, not going to lie, awesome to have Robert Picardo back as the doctor. But I'll talk about that when I get to medical. So here's the interior. Uh, pretty much spot on, 
uh, match for the uh, for the Voyager set. And you're going to hear me say that a lot because they've done a really good job just perfectly replicating. Yeah, they've they've maybe heightened things up a little bit, you know, gotten things, but that's more in, in respect to camera control and, and movement and things of that nature. Uh, just speaking on the mess hall as a, in general, like I said, I, I really liked the uh, the layout and the design choices, uh, and it kind of became a character in its own right. Um, you know, almost like Ten Ford on on the old Enterprise on the Enterprise D, which is uh, pretty cool. So we will leave the mess hall, loop right around here, head back to the turbo lift. I feel kind of out of place because I'm wearing like the new D. I was wearing the DS9 uniform. Everyone else is wearing the brand new special 25th century thing. Okay, so we'll head down to deck three. Okay, here we are on deck three. Um, deck three. Let's see. It should be right around the corner here. Has your quarters on it. Um, so here's the captain's quarters. Pretty nice. Um, got a little gramophone in here. It actually plays music. Which is kind of cool. Your little captain's desk. It would have been kind of cool if you could also access your duty officers and such from down here as well. Um, but I understand that's meant to be for the ready room. Um, naturally, the every door just seems to open all at random. Your uh, bed, and then it's supposed to be your washroom in here. And for some reason, you can't go into your washroom. Like, I need to shave. I need to wash my face. Why can't I? No. So, that's just kind of a weird omission. But that said. Pretty cool. I like it. It's good looking. Good stuff. Of course, this is, uh, I think. Did Jane. Uh, you know, now you're going to lose me because I don't recall if. I think these are Tuvox paintings. Um, these may have been Tuvox. But, I, you know, it, that's kind of the problem that you seem to encounter. There's there's Tuvox ready room, but this may be a, a replica of Janeway's quarters, which kind of throws the whole thing off, but hmm, that's kind of a meh. That's neither here nor there. Okay, let's see. I don't think I can go down here. Yeah. Those doors are sensitive. They trigger it. They trigger at the slightest passing. That That is kind of annoying. And of course, with the high, P ways being this crowded, like I'm constantly hearing the doors just open, close, open, close. But anyways, here's just medical. Here's your ship's medical officer, so you can talk to the doctor. It would actually be just awesome if they had replaced it with an EMH Mark I. That that would have sold it for me. Uh, I thought Robert Picardo's performance as the Doctor was awesome. Uh, and I loved how, even though he kind of started off stiff, and he grew into this character. And that, that was supposed to be the case. He was supposed to be this cold, just programmed piece of software, and then eventually grew into a character in his own right. And that, that was pretty cool to see. So uh, seeing Robert Picardo back for Delta Rising really made me... Uh, a pretty happy camper. I thought that was pretty cool. So it's a spot on like all the other uh, sections. Just copy, perfect surgical bay, the med the med uh, beds, the actual doctor's office, which I found kind of weird. Why is he not sitting at his chair? I guess they wanted to be able to allow you to go sit at the doctor's chair if you want. Like, oh look at me, I'm sitting I'm sitting in the doctor's chair. I just hope he doesn't come back and yell at me. So um, yeah, stuck on the door. Okay. So we'll go out. And that should be about it for this deck. Yeah. And that's the other weird thing. Is they, as soon as they hit a dead end, they just turn right around and walk back. It's kind of like, okay, what? You just, well, you forgot something back in your quarters? you know? But then, does that account for virtually every member of this crew? What are all you people doing? Okay. Head to deck 11. Now, deck 11 is pretty cool. Probably my favorite. First off, it has astrometrics. Of course, uh, 709's workstation. And uh, pretty cool. Astrometrics. The only thing I think that would make astrometrics even cooler is if um, we could actually manipulate the star chart up here. That would be pretty cool. Maybe even control like our transwarp sort of things. But I know I'm asking too much for that. And it's still pretty cool looking. Um, I love how they even got the displays completely accurate just as they were on the show. That's pretty cool. I kind of wish maybe your science officer had been parked there, like your science duty officer guy, but 
doesn't matter really. It's it's kind of quibbling at this point. Okay, so as we go down the P way here, we come into main engineering. And it is awesome. Because everything is awesome. Um I try to get that song stuck out of your head. That's just impossible. Uh I love the Voyager Warcore. The the plasma flow look to it. I loved it. It's probably it's kinda weird, but out of all the warp cores, this is my favorite. Uh, because you know you always were being told this is warp plasma, right? None of the other warp cores had that kind of plasma feel to it. It was kind of like you know, dum dum dum. You know, those little those little kind of you know little neon lights that just went up 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 up. You know, and it, it just never really felt like it was a plasma warp core. Well, here we are with a plasma warp core, and it looks awesome. And I really wish that all the other warp cores looked like this. This would be cool. So here you have your engineering officer for your your duty officers. Now, my primary gripe about main engineering, I can't hop onto this little elevator, I can't go up the ladders, you can go into this little side room that's supposed to be the turbo lift, and you can't do anything. You can't do anything with this thing, it's dead. Why can't I go to the second level of engineering? I'd like to be able to go up to the upper observation deck and look out over the warp court. Why can't I do that? What the hell? You know, we spent how much on this darn thing? It's like dang near, you know, 40 bucks, almost. And I can't go to the second level of engineering? Unsat. Now, finally, over here we have the cargo bay with 709's alcoves. So it's kind of neat. you got a little bit of Borg technology on your, sh your ship. You know, just hop up in one of the alcoves and I am regenerating. Resistance is futile. Actually, if you are, this would be kind of cool for those who actually have uh, liberated Borg officers. It's finally, you got a place to actually regenerate it. It's kind of cool. Uh, once again, my gripe about the crew, they're just wandering in and out of the cargo bay. They go up to the bulkhead, turn around, go right back out. Like, oh look, there's the bulkhead. That was cool. Everyone was telling me I should look at this bulkhead. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, hey, did you see the bulkhead? I'm on our way now. I was told to go look at the bulkhead. Wow, it's so cool. Time to go. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, no. Your ops officer is in the cargo bay, just standing there, going over inventories. Kind of cool. So, verdict. Is the ship worth it? Well, that's really going to depend on what your focus is for purchasing this pack. If you're looking for uh, you know, a brand new science vessel that you feel is going to really up your game I wouldn't recommend it um, this may not be the, the vessel of your choice um, if you're buying it because you really 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 want the Voyager interiors it really depends on how much you're willing to spend if you're willing to drop the money now I mean go for it I mean it's pretty cool uh, having the Voyager interiors kinda cool and inviting people onto the bridge to go ooh ah it's the Voyager interior is not bad. It's pretty cool. Um, that said, you're dropping in some cases about thirty, a little, a little over thirty dollars for these packs, and you're essentially just getting a ship and an interior. Compare that with say, you know, we'll talk about packs here. Think about the Deep Space Nine pack. Look at all you've got for what you paid for. You got a lot. You got. You know, costume options, you know, the Admiral's outfit, the Vedic outfit, three duty officers that were pretty cool, the the Defiant interior, which was also pretty well done, actually, until the Voyager interior was released, the Defiant interior was my favorite, uh, and Bajoran phaser rifle, Bajoran phaser, and the Shafee uh, shuttle. I mean, it's pretty cool. You got a lot of stuff. Look at all this. And then you go down to the... I think I have it right here. The Pathfinder bundle, it's okay, you get the ship in the interior in two different interiors. And let's let's not kid ourselves. Okay, you're getting yeah, you're getting two interiors, but really, which one are you all gonna use? You're gonna use the Voyager interior. No no one's gonna I, I don't know of anybody in my fleet, and while I'm talking about them, we'll give them a plug. Um You'll note that I'm wearing my Lieutenant JG outfit, because I am a Lieutenant JG in the UFP, United Federation of Planets, UFPlanets.com. That fleet is awesome. They have pretty much, pretty much taught me everything 
about how to properly run STFs, how to properly fit your ship, all sorts of cool stuff. So if you haven't checked them out, please do so. UFPlanets.com. Give them a give them a look. They're pretty cool. So, anyways, going back to what I was just ranting about. Okay, so you're throwing down for this thing, and yeah, you're getting a halfway decent sh ship with the little aero shuttle, which, by the way, is a terrible module. I mean, yes, the aero shuttle itself has got some nice little bonuses, but in comparison to other pets or vessels with hangar bays, it's pretty inferior. <clears throat> you know, and the other part is, why an aero shuttle? Why not, like, a Delta Flyer? You know, an upgraded Delta Flyer that had the viral matrix and all and, and all the other capabilities that the, the aero shuttle has. And the other problem, of course, is that you can launch the aero shuttle, but the the uh, it only the uh, cooldown only occurs when you recall the darn thing, and so generally most of the builds I've been seeing, whether it be uh, on Stow Academy or recommended by uh, my fleet, they're dumping the Aero Shuttle altogether. It's just this one of those modules that comes with these ships that tends to get tossed into your inventory and never seen again. Um, so it's it that's at best a mediocre science vessel. You know, maybe on the higher end, a little it's a T six, yeah, and it's got the mastery, which also adds some nice little toys and some capabilities to the ship. But at the end of the day, you probably get more performance out of a Vesta, um, and you're spending less. Now, granted, you're not getting the Voyager interior, which is why everyone's purchasing it. Like what I was saying earlier is that. Out of the two, everyone's going to use the original Voyager interior with astrometrics, with with the cargo bay, with uh, you know, everything essentially feeling like the Voyager set. No one, I, I don't know of anybody who's going to run the fresh off the shelf, I think it's the 20, was it 2471 set? Or, I'm going to have to, do they actually tell me exactly? They should tell me. Yeah, the 2371 and the 2410. So I've mixed them up. The 2371 version, I have not seen anyone use. I checked it out. And I think it's lifeless. 2410 version has definitely uh, got more character to it. Now, in both cases of the interiors, there are way too many crew wandering around around the P-ways. Or passageways. You know, I'm sorry, Navy guy here. Uh, that's just too many. It's just so damn crowded. You hear this little, you know, top, 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 you know, walking a foot. Every door just constantly opening and closing, opening and closing. It is a little jarring. Um... I think they could reduce the uh, personnel count. They could do that for all the ships, quite frankly. The number of personnel running around on your ships now is already, already is even especially like on the Defiant. You know, on the Defiant, the, your crew is much smaller. And how can you afford to have what appears to be like a third of your crew just wandering around one of your <laughs> one of your your decks? So, all in. Uh, like I said, you know, it's really going to be depending on how much you're willing to shell out for a you know, halfway decent science vessel and an interior. And the interior is pretty cool, but it's really going to be a judgment call for you guys on whether or not it's worth it. And for a lot of people, I don't think it will be. Um, in which case, you know, you may want to hold out. You may want to wait. I think they may just try to get all the money they can from people who buy the packages, and then eventually they'll launch it as an interior. But they haven't done it with the Defiant interior, so, you know, we you may not want to hold your breath on that one. They may release it because they may feel they're going to get some money off of it. Um, but as you'll know, you know, we go into ships, go into bridge packs. You know, the Defiant Bridge is not here. I mean, yeah, okay, they got the Defiant Bridge, but it's not the bridge. This is not the the same. We all know that. These are the leftovers from when the first, you know, the first launch of Stowe and all the bridges were just horrible. You know, okay, this is supposed to be the Galaxy Bridge. It's not it, it, it. See, there, there. That's, I guess, what I'd bring up here. I would hope that a true Prometheus bridge, a true Galaxy bridge set, is released. You know, a true Excelsior, a true Sovereign, the actual replicas of the sets get released. Not the, like what is this? This is supposed to be for the Intrepid. Like, how in God's name does that even look like what was supposed to be for an Intrepid class ship? So. That's that's just a rant, you know. That's neither here nor there. So, anyways, the Voyager interior, I think it's pretty cool looking. Um, I like it. I'm still kind of in the back of my mind wondering if it was actually worth the money. So, that's just my opinion. 
So hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this minor little tour. Uh, come along. Uh, if you like, please thumbs up, subscribe. You know, send me PMs. Tell me what you'd like to see. I'd be glad to answer requests. I just look paranoid. Look, look at that shifty eyes, just all over the place. I think I need a drink. Maybe it's time to go to uh, the mess hall. And... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the mess hall. Thanks for watching. See you around.